Welcome to the giant world of tiny things and the first part of our soap bubble tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to photograph and film soap bubbles to create footage like this. Hi, I'm Maximilian from the giant world of tiny things and in this first part of our soap bubble tutorial I'm going to show you how to mix a bubble solution for long lasting bubbles, how to set up and light your shot and last but not least I'm going to share my camera setup and show you what settings work best. Then in the second part of this video we'll focus on the filming and I'll share the behind the scenes of my production a film of color which you can watch right here. So let's dive right into it and start at the beginning with our bubble solution. And the recipe that I found to work best for me uses 6 parts of water with 2 parts of dish soap and half a part of glycerin. And the glycerin just makes sure that your bubbles become more durable and easier to shoot. And if you don't have any glycerin at home you can also use sugar or corn syrup instead. Just use a full part instead of the half part glycerin. Next you're going to need a suitable container to blow your bubbles in, ideally a round black vase like this. Black because that helps to cancel out any stray light and goes to improve your image quality and round simply because that's the shape that bubbles naturally like to take on. And while you're mixing your solution it's a good idea to make a little bit more than your vase actually holds so you've got enough for a refill later. Alright, time to start setting things up. Place your vase on a water resistant surface and make sure there are no distractions in the background. I used a black piece of foam board to achieve a nice and evenly dark backdrop without any distractions. But if you don't have anything black for the backdrop just make sure there's no ambient light in your actual exposure. So take a dark frame without any artificial light and make sure it's completely underexposed. That way you can be sure that all your actual exposure comes from your light source and will look the way you want it to look. And as we can clearly see naturally soap film is a transparent subject and so figuring out the right lighting really is key to capturing these beautiful psychedelic color plays we are after. And these colors and patterns only reveal themselves in those areas of the bubble where it is reflecting concentrated light. So in other words to get a large surface area of that bubble to reveal these color plays we have to create a large and diffused light source as close to the surface of the bubble as we can place it. In other words the idea a light source is a softbox but if you don't have one don't get discouraged because I'm sure you can find a DIY solution that works for you. Just use a piece of parchment paper or packaging foam to create a diffusion layer between your subject and your light source to imitate the look of a large softbox. It's also a lot of fun to experiment with multiple light sources that's how I came up with this look. I used two softboxes at different orientations and they both casted their own reflection onto the bubble which created that halo sort of effect. And even if you can't make any large light source work at all, even if all you have is your basic camera with its pop-up flash, just grab a rubber band and a pet bottle to create a diffuser like this and you can start creating images like this. After all a flash is the best solution for still images. It is bright and fast enough to freeze motion even with turbulent bubbles. Unfortunately it does not allow us to preview our composition in the viewfinder where the bubble appears transparent until we actuate the shutter button. That's why I came up with this solution. As you can see I'm using a continuous softbox as my focusing aid but the primary light source for my actual exposure is an on camera speed light that's tucked into the same softbox. This way I get to see exactly what I'm about to photograph before I actuate the shutter button. And by the way it's a good idea to not physically press that button but to use a remote control or an intervalometer instead to avoid shifting your focus or introducing motion blur. And that takes us to my camera setup. 
My camera setup consists from my 5D Mark II with a 70 to 200 mm L lens on 68 mm of extension tubes. I decided on a telephoto lens for its working distance and on this particular one for its superior sharpness. Now working distance can be a critical factor because the lens will cast a reflection of itself onto your bubble if you get too close. I also found this lens to give me the perfect magnification range to fill the frame with my half bubble but leave enough room for a nice nice black contrasty background. By the way, if you use extension tubes, the wider the focal length of the lens that you're using, the more magnification ratio it's going to yield. For example, these images were shot at 100 mm. To get a bit closer, I had to zoom out to 70 and later I changed my lens to a 28 to 135 mm, which allowed for much more detailed shots when zoomed out a bit. But whatever setup you're using for your macro photography, there always is a way to make it work. So experiment with different angles to see what works best for your lens and camera. Focus somewhere in between the center of your bubble and the point of it that's closest to your lens and avoid putting the focus on either far end of it, unless that's the look you're drawing for. And it just never gets boring, no bubble ever looks the same as one before and you can even change their looks and colors simply by either blowing at them with a straw or changing your recipe slightly and variating the amounts of soap or sugar or glycerin you're using. My camera settings for these images were 1 to 100, which is my camera's fastest flash sync speed, f22 for a decent amount of depth of field and ISO 640 with a flash power of 1 8. Now I do realize I could have increased my flash power and lowered my ISO, but I rather stuck with a flash power that allows for continuous shooting, you never know what you might be missing. And don't be afraid to bump up your ISO a little bit either, these soap patterns really survive noise reduction in post very well. Honestly, I could just spend days and nights watching these hypnotizing plays of soap and color and that's exactly what I did and I filmed it too. The result is a video that I recently uploaded called A Film of Color which you can find right here or in the description below. If you haven't seen it yet, please check it out. I'd love for you to have a look. And in my next video, part 2 of this one, I'm going to share the behind the scenes of that very production. So I'll see you soon and if you enjoyed the content, please leave me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Have a good one. Stay creative. Cheers.